is it's called acquired trichorexis nodosa. It is a mouthful, but all it means is recurrent hair breakage. So let's dive right in. So acquired trichorexis nodosa occurs as a direct result of damaging hair practices. Usually when we see it in curly haired women, it's because the hair is really dry. And as we talked about extensively in our first lecture, curly hair is inherently fragile, right? That's just that baseline. But then certainly applying chemical relaxers, especially no lie relaxers, heat styling, very high levels of heat, all of these things can break the hair, okay? And what usually people will notice is they can, their whole scalp for the most part seems covered, but they'll notice that they can't grow their hair. They'll say, you know, it gets to my ears and it just can't get past there. Or it gets to my shoulders and it just can't get past there. And I just don't think my hair grows at all. But that's not true. As long as you are living and breathing, your hair is growing, right? As long as your scalp is healthy, as long as you haven't ripped out the follicles, hair is growing. And think about it. If you were to apply braids, if your hair really wasn't growing, that would mean that you could keep braids in for six months and it would look brand new, right? But that's not true. You know that if you keep it in for three months or longer than that, you're going to see a lot of new growth, right? So your hair is always growing. But if it's breaking faster than it's growing, then of course you're not going to see any changes in length. Now for really severe cases, it can break all the way to the scalp. So then you start to have random pockets where your scalp is visible and the hair is very dry. I also didn't mention here, wigs are a really common culprit for acquired trichorexis nodosa just because of that drying effect they have. And so what does my average patient with severe breakage look like, okay, when they come in to see me? Well, they're usually in their 30s or 40s and they're usually more on the tightly curled end of the spectrum. So I'm talking about 4B, 4C, 4C plus, okay? Additionally, what I find is one of the more common styling habits is the use of a wig, especially if women are noticing so much breakage that they can't actually get a braid to adhere to the scalp, so they're covering it up, right? And, and part of this is because a wig is so easy. It's easy to take on, it's easy to take off, but again, it's really pulling a lot of moisture away from the hair during the day. Um, when it's really severe, it may be mistaken for other forms of hair loss. So I see very commonly that patients are coming in with a diagnosis of scarring permanent hair loss, right? So someone is telling them something is wrong with their scalp, right? That your scalp is scarred and no hair will ever be regenerated in an area of scar, but they actually don't have it, right? And so these patients may be very diligent they may follow up with their doctor on a regular basis and do all the things, but notice no improvement, right? So they'll go to the doctor, they'll get their scalp injection, they'll put their medicine on their scalp and they'll cover it right back with a wig, okay? A lot of times, because the hair seems so damaged, many women just become, you know, a little bit frustrated with the hair care routine, right? They think, well, gosh, if I have this hair loss, right, if I've been diagnosed with this other type of hair loss, or if I hate what my hair looks like, what's the point? What's the point of deep conditioning? What's the point of leaving condition? What's the point of protein treatment? Like, I just, I don't even want to look at my hair anymore, right? And so I'm just going to cover it up every day. I just don't want to think about it, okay? Um, more often than not, these women, at least in my practice, are successful. They're professional women. And guess what? They have very busy schedules, right? So they'll do exactly what they need to do, which again, maybe using their medicines, things like that, but doing a four to eight hour wash routine, if they feel like it's going to have no benefit, it's hard to incorporate that into a busy schedule, right? So it's important for you as someone watching this series, but certainly other doctors to recognize that this is a form of hair loss that exists. So let's show some examples, okay? So when I, when I just went through that list of what my average patient looks like, this is what they look like, okay? Hair is very, very tightly curled. So again, 4B, 4C, 4C plus, right? It's very, very dry. 